Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast. And in my nearly 10 years making Magic cards, I have made a lot of cards I'm proud of. And a few that I'm not so proud of. Today, I want to tell you about five cards that I deeply regret making the way I did, plus how I'd fix them today. Ready? Let's go. First up, I want to give an honorable mention to Arcane Signet. This one wasn't all my design, but I was definitely involved. However, I already did a video talking all about Arcane Signet and didn't want to just rehash that here. So just go watch that if you want to hear more about that card. Now, onto the list. Number five, we have Najila, the Blade Blossom. Now, there are a lot of sweet things about this card, and it's serving a noble purpose. We were doing warriors in all five colors in Battle Bond, and having a lord for all of them made sense. There are two big problems with it I'd go back and change. First of all, it's first ability triggering off of tokens. Allowing your tokens to attack and create more tokens is too self-propagating. It actually points you in the wrong direction. Instead of telling you that you want a deck full of warriors, it says you actually don't need any other warriors to make her great because she's her own engine. If I could change it, I would make it whenever a non-token warrior attacks. Second, her activated ability being able to be used multiple times in a turn just makes infinite attacks way too easy. A single Druid's Repository, and you can go infinite pretty trivially, made even easier by the fact that her tokens create more tokens. Looking back on it, I should have probably given it a once per turn limit. Cool card, but a couple things that pushed her over the line. Number four, Boreas Charger. What's wrong with this one? Well, my regret here actually runs the other way. I wish I had made it stronger. Originally, its ability always put all of the planes you found onto the battlefield. There were some concerns about it being too strong, so I weakened it to only putting one of them onto the battlefield and the rest into your hand. In retrospect, it would have been a pretty great white staple card for a commander and encouraged people to play with a lot of planes. Both things which seem healthy for the format, alas. Number three, Fantas the Warweaver. You probably didn't expect this one. This card was around since early in the creation of Commander 2018, and everybody loved it. The card was fun in playtests and made the game play out a lot differently. So we kept it and didn't really ever think about cutting the card. Everyone just enjoyed it so much. The problem is that while that was happening, every other deck was getting at least one backup commander that really matched what the deck was doing. Red Blue Artifacts with a lot of tokens got Thanos and Brutaclad, Bant Enchantress got Kestia and Tuvasa, and Esper Top of Library Manipulation got Yennet. The Jun deck was a lands deck, and while it did have Windgrace as the face, the other backup commander ended up Jairus, who cares about lands only in the sense that you can cast it for more mana. When the decks came out, players were understandably upset that their Jund Lands Matter deck only had one Lands Matter commander. Now fortunately, as it turns out, Windgrace is a good one. But to this day, I am still sad that I was blinded by everyone's love of Thantis and I just kept it instead of looking for a Lands Matter commander. It didn't even put a counter on all of your spiders, which would have at least made it a cool spider lord. I regret not removing Thantis, keeping him in mind for a future product, and making a new Jun Lands Matter commander in Thantis' place. There's a good magic design lesson here. No matter how beloved a single card is, you always have to ask, is it getting in the way of the needs of the set? If the answer is yes, then you should probably strip that card out and replace it with something that meets those needs. Now we're getting into some heavy hitters. At number two, I have Eureka, the Tiger Shadow. Now don't get me wrong, I love a lot about Yuriko. I love ninjas, and I wanted to make a blue-black ninja commander, Shaq. She has sweet art, she's exciting to play, and she even invented a weird sideways commander deck full of reject blue and black evasive one drops. What's not to like? Well, there is one egregious design error with this card to me. The command tax doesn't scale up on commander ninjutsu. No matter how many times Yuriko perishes, she will always just cost blue-black to bring out of your command zone. This fundamentally breaks a rule of the format. Your commander is supposed to cost more as the game goes on. That really helps make sure that the flow and the trajectory of the game scale with what has happened in the game and that it's self-balancing. If people keep killing your commander because it's too strong, you're going to have a harder time casting it. Yuriko just sidesteps this very important commander rule entirely. I had the choice to make Commander Ninjutsu work however I wanted, and I chose 
this way. And I definitely regret not adding the commander tax into the commander ninjutsu cost. With that restriction, the card would still be incredibly strong, but not ignore a crucial part of the commander format entirely. I would not expect more commander ninjutsu cards in your future. And finally, number one, Drum roll, please. It's Edgar Markov. If you've ever played against an Edgar Markov deck, you know how incredibly powerful this commander can be without you ever even casting it. While it's a fine card to cast, the bulk of the power comes from the ability to just repeatedly make free creatures. I could make a whole video about Eminence at some point. Melissa and I will probably get to it in our Commander Chronicles series eventually. But it's a mechanic that's like playing with fire next to a gasoline tank while suspended over a vat of oil. It's extremely dangerous. I know a lot of people call the whole mechanic a mistake, but I think it's actually a little more nuanced than that. The problem is the eminence cards that give you additional resources rather than enhance your other cards. For example, your dragon, I think, is actually great. It makes your other cards better. Maybe they come down earlier, sure, but at the core, you're still just dealing with a Dragon Lord Silumgar one turn earlier. If we had done cost reduction four times over, one for each tribe, maybe it wouldn't have been a problem. Edgar Markov, on the other hand, creates extra resources into the game over and over and over again. I made Edgar this way because the vampire deck had a tough time rebuilding after sweepers. But not only did we make it too good at that, but it's just too easy to snowball and amass a ton of vampires early in the game. Regardless of if we should have scrapped eminence or not, making so many free tokens without casting your commander is not just too strong, it's not particularly enjoyable to play against either. It's just violating of how magic works essentially giving you a creature-making enchantment that other players can't even interact with. If we were going to do eminence here, something which didn't make more permanence would be the call. Maybe, for example, it could give all your vampires the ability to get a plus one plus one counter when they dealt damage to an opponent, like Rakish Air and the other Innistrad vampires. Maybe it could just give them lifelink. But no matter how you slice it, the printed design is way over the line. And for that reason, Edgar Markov gets my number one. But I'm curious, what do you think of Eminence? Do you think it could ever be used again? Or do you think it should stay far away from ever appearing in a set? And do you love any of these cards? Are you happy I didn't make these changes? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll talk with you again on Friday. And in the meantime, may you take time to learn from your mistakes. You got this. It mostly shows up in blue, but could also be used in white for Loyal Griff and other rescuing cards. This is one which makes a decent amount of sense to me. It shave words off every single one of these cards, and unsets aside, every bounce card returns to owner's hand. So specifying that on every single unsummon doesn't feel...